Turn our attention over to the phones. Mark Farkas is on the line from C-SPAN. We're talking first ladies available in book form. This is really a fascinating uh, look at, well, all of the women who were there and the impact they made on the nation, the White House, and a whole lot more. Mark, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you guys? We're doing great. Thanks for taking time to be on with us this morning. Hey. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me. And it was a pleasure to meet you on uh, Wednesday when I uh, got a little backstage tour of the C-SPAN offices. Got a chance yeah, to... And you guys were quite busy here in D.C. Yeah, we, but I made time. Made sure we stopped by to say hello. And we saw, if you're, if you're willing to share, you had a wonderful note from a former First Lady uh, already in response to the book. Yeah, we sent copies of the uh, first run copies of the book to all the living first ladies. And, uh, yeah, I got a great note back from Barbara Bush. Um, says, Dear Mark, many thanks for first ladies. I can't wait to read it. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, it's, it's a timely book. Uh, obviously, there's a first lady who is running for president. So, you know, there's currency to it, and there, there's great history in it as well. You know, and you, you learn so many things. You know, uh, the first thing that popped into mind, you, you know, so many times when, uh, when, you, when you're reading different blurbs and uh, different pieces on the book, you know, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. A lot of this stuff was, was never covered in school when you ran down the presidents and, and, and what went on with their administrations. I mean, we learned a little bit about Mary Lincoln, but some of the others, all of the others in there, don't get the mention and don't, you don't get the background that you're going to get in this book. I think you know, just the title of the book, First Ladies, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women, tell you something. Uh, there really is a lot to learn. It's a different, you know, it's a different prism, a different lens of, of looking at history. And so many times these women are political partners. They're there. You know, Mary Lincoln was pushing along Abraham Lincoln. She saw something in him that maybe he didn't even see. Um, so they're pushing them along, uh, and they are political partners. And then once they get to the White House, house, you know, it's a fascinating tale of those who loved the job and some of those who didn't really love it, um, but they really are, as a group, uh, iconic and, and worth studying. Mark Park is with us from uh, C-SPAN executive producer of the uh, First Ladies Influence and Image series. Now, the book, First Ladies, is out. Uh, Sarah Polk, the wife of President James K. Polk, underrated president, Perhaps an underrated first lady, too. Uh, she was really a political partner for her husband, the president, which uh, I would imagine fairly unusual for that time. She was unusual for the time. She, was, she helped him edit speeches. She attended debates in the halls of Congress. You know, he was Speaker of the House as well, so she was pretty well connected and knew how Washington worked. And is just a you know to me a great example of one first lady, uh, but there are, again there are so many of them who were these political partners uh, behind the scenes, obviously because you know. But I will say for for that time period, she was out in front more than most first ladies in terms of uh, you know giving her input to her husband and and folks you know folks in Washington knew about it. But you can even go back to Abigail Adams, who was an incredible political partner, Martha Washington. Um, you know both. George Washington and Martha Washington were setting precedents and were very aware that they were setting precedents. So, you know, I, I think more often than not, the, these women were um, political partners, some of them behind the scenes and some of them, you know, more and more today, people, you know, they're out in front. And the flip side of the, the descriptions you just gave, I guess, would be Jane Pierce. There is, uh, you know, there are a number of these first ladies who were reluctant uh, to go into the job. Jane Pierce, you know, even before she got to the White House, uh, you know, was not much for politics. Didn't want her husband, Franklin Pierce, to run, and he actually uh, sort of went behind her back and got the nomination. Um, so, and then, <laughs> obviously, there's such a... Uh, wouldn't be the first husband who went behind a wife's back, I guess. But um, for something that big, that's, that's probably a mistake. But um, it was made worse by the fact uh, there's there's some of these first ladies who are not only reluctant, but tragedy strikes them and makes it even worse. And Jane Pierce, they had one uh, remaining son, Benny, who uh, was killed in a train accident right before they came to Washington. He was actually almost beheaded right in front of them. And so her time as first lady was you know, absolutely. Absolutely, um, you know, not not the best four years of her life. Franklin Pierce, um, you know, it was it was tough for both of them when you lose a child, and you know, as Mary Lincoln lost so many children, uh, it made it a really difficult four years for her.
First Ladies is the book, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women. Mark Farkas from C-SPAN with us, Riley and Scott on WROK. Grace Coolidge, big baseball fan, big Red Sox fan, and an animal lover. Is she the only First Lady, Mark, to have a pet raccoon live at the White House with her? <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> that I know of. Now, lots of first ladies have had pets and dogs, and, you know, obviously the Roosevelt's, uh, the, the Teddy Roosevelt's had, you know, all types of animals running around the house on the second floor and on the first floor. Uh, but, yeah, Grace Coolidge is a great story because she's sort of this uh, very fun-loving, uh, outgoing woman uh, who's married to a very introverted man in Calvin Coolidge, and so she's sort of the, the perfect antidote to uh, to him, but yeah, huge baseball fan, um, and you know, really, really, uh, she's also another example of this burgeoning new media that uh, first ladies begin to use. You see her in the newsreel; she's one of the first first ladies, uh, you know, who you begin to see in the newsreels um, with photo opportunities. And now it's something that we take for granted. You see first ladies mm -hmm. all the time in front of the camera, but she's sort of yeah, she's she's a very interesting woman, uh, and also one that. That had a you know tragedy in the White House. Their son Calvin Jr. They had two sons. Uh, Calvin Jr. got a blister playing on the tennis court at the White House and died. Um, and so it it really you know Calvin Coolidge wore a black armband the rest of his time as president. But and and really grieved over it. And it was Grace who really was sort of the stronger of the two and really tried to get him to cope with it. Um, uh, you know she coped with it a little bit better than he did. The other thing to note, uh, you know, full of uh, full of photographs as well. Uh, boy, you know, I bet if some of these first ladies could be uh, placed into a time machine and offered a redo on these photos, they would take it because, uh, you know, with the with the early photography, how stern and unhappy can I look in this photograph? Uh, not much more stern and unhappy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm looking at this picture of Sarah Polk and uh, James K. Polk, and uh, but you, you can't tell if that's a loving hand uh, on his arm or man. I'm just. Uh, can we get over the get this over with and get out of here? It's interesting because it, actually you take a look at the history of photography and that was the style back then. You don't see many people smiling. I mean, actually, there is a great photograph of Dolly Madison in her older years where she is smiling. But it was, you know, it was part of the the, the time period and you know the the culture of photography. I think at the time. If you look uh, rather quickly, uh, James K. Polk also has a little Christopher Lloyd in him facial. Oh, he does. Yeah, yeah. he's got yeah, that after. Doc Brown look going yeah, for him there. Right. there. <laughs> Head for the DeLorean. Let's get out of here. Mark Park is with us from uh, C-SPAN. He's an executive producer there. First Ladies is the book, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women. Uh, so Jane Pierce didn't want anything to do with uh, the presidency or the uh, First Lady job, Mark. Any of the First Ladies hard to handle uh, by White House staff, perhaps those who wanted to overreach the role of First Lady, those who... Uh, just quite simply weren't able to be controlled by those around them. Well, I can tell you the the on the opposite side of the spectrum from Jane Pierce is someone like Julia Dent, um, who I'm sorry, Julia Dent Grant, mm -hmm. who you know who wanted to be first lady, couldn't wait to be first lady, and just threw extravagant parties, um, <laughs> and really made the most of her time as first lady. Now, I am sure that there are first ladies throughout history. Again, they have strong personalities. Uh, not all of them. I don't want to box them in, but they're. they're there are, you know, there are first ladies, uh, just like presidents, who are probably more di difficult for the for the staff to to deal with than other first ladies. Um, uh, let me just say one thing, if I could, about about the book, which interests me so much, is that um, having done the television series, we really, you know, we were looking for sources on first ladies, and there were some books out there that that helped us along, but there really weren't a lot. Of, you know, there there weren't that many that that really told the personal stories of the lives of these women. And so what this book does, you know, it takes the programs that we did, and we had some of the most preeminent first ladies and presidential historians on the shows. And this book really, uh, what Susan Swain has done, is taken those, the, the comments from the, the, 
from the television programs and these great historians and put it into a narrative. So this book, in one you know, in one place now, you can go to get the personal stories of all these women. And she really did a fantastic job. You know, the programs would sometimes bend a little bit this way and a little bit that way, and so it wouldn't all be in order and in you know a nice narrative. But what she's been able to do is really create a narrative in each one of these chapters where you learn about these women from you know from their upbringing through their years in the White House and beyond. The book First Ladies, Presidential Historians on the Lives of 45 Iconic American Women, Susan Swain and C-SPAN. All right, Mark, uh, let's put you on the spot here a little bit since you're intimately familiar with the source material here. If you had to pick any of them, or, or are we, we'll, we'll spread it out a little bit. Pick two. Who are the two most interesting ones to you personally? Well, I'll tell you who I might want to have dinner with. <laughs> I think uh, some of the, you know, a couple of the most fascinating ones. Uh, to me, Betty Ford and Lady Bird Johnson, now they're modern first ladies. Um, and uh, you'd have to put Dolly Madison in that category as well. But um, Betty Ford, because she was so outspoken, um, and I think when you take a look at causes, um, you know, you can you can argue that Abigail Adams was arguing for women's rights and the rights of African Americans, you know, back at the beginning of the Republic. But having an official cause is something that's more of a modern phenomenon. And Lady Bird Johnson, with her beautification and her environmentalism, and Betty Ford, uh, with their breast cancer awareness, and then obviously after the White House uh, with the Betty Ford Center, two fascinating women, two smart women, um, who I would have loved to have had dinner with. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing somebody very obvious, but ha have we had a uh, first lady, first ladies uh, pass away while a uh, husband was in office? Yes, uh, you know, the first one to, to pass away, well, actually, right before, you know, Andrew Jackson was elected, and it was a bruising campaign in 1828 and 1829, uh, and his wife, Rachel, passed away right before she never got to the White House. Um, but the first first lady to pass away while, in, while serving in the role was John Tyler's first wife, Letitia Tyler. Um, and, you know, then all of a sudden he marries Julia Tyler. He's 54, she's 21. One, it's quite the sort of a scandalous uh, relationship in, in Washington. But she brings uh, some glamour to the uh, to the role as well as a very young first lady. And the the, the, the snippet on Dolly Madison I'm looking at here. You know, you, people always talk about how coarse our politics are today, and all the things people say, and all that that, that negative advertising, and all that. that's nothing compared to what we were doing in the early days of the Republic. Dolly Madison, rumors in, uh, in the equivalent of today's tabloids, she had an overly sexual nature that prevented her and the president from having children. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> which I would we think have an overly been a cult of personality in this country, and which is one of the reasons, you know, we wanted to do the television series because these women have, you know, they're they're celebrities and have been uh, from the time of Martha Washington all the way through today. It would seem to me, though, the overly sexual nature would produce many more children. N not the fact that you, <laughs> you, you, you couldn't have any, but, you know, your tabloids being what they are. You're going to want to grab this book because you're going to learn so many different things and, and get some insight. might change your thinking on some things as well. First ladies, presidential historians on the lives of 45 iconic American women. Susan Swain, along with C-SPAN, put this together. Mark, thanks a lot for taking time out of your morning. Much success with it. Hey, Riley and Scott, thank you very, very much, and uh, appreciate it. And folks, pick up the book. It's a great read.